Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet, starring the entire Nelson family, Ozzie, Harriet, David, and Ricky. Here is Ozzie, who plays the part of Ozzie Nelson. And, of course, his lovely wife, Harriet, as Harriet Nelson. The older of the Nelson boys, David, appears as David Nelson. And his younger brother, the irrepressible Ricky, played by Ricky Nelson. The Nelson's next-door neighbor, Thorny, is played by Don DeFore. pleasant surprise. We're having a special assembly at school today. Oh, good for you. That's too, Mom. We're having a special program about George Washington. We'll probably miss all our morning classes. Good old George Washington. Well, I can see why he'd be a popular guy today. We don't have to go to school at all on Monday. Yes, I know. I sure wish he had more birthdays, boy. <laughs> when you get a little older, you'll be thankful that birthdays only come once a year. Did I hear somebody mention a birthday? Yeah, Monday. Don't tell me you've forgotten. Somebody's birthday on Monday? Let's see, Harriet. Yours is July. David is October. You want a hint? No, 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 no. Wait a minute. I'm usually pretty good at this. I can certainly remember a birthday without a hint. Let's see. Okay, give me just a, a small hint. His name is George Washington. Oh! <laughs> well, I didn't think I'd forgotten a birthday. You forgot his. Well, I wasn't thinking about him. He was a good man, boy. Yeah, I, I know he was. We're having a special assembly about him today. We're even getting out of school early. Oh, good. Good old George Washington. Well, here's your breakfast. You'd better eat it or you'll be late. Yeah, I don't want to be late for getting out of school early. <laughs> uh, Harry, I don't think I'll have any breakfast. I think I'll just have orange juice. Thorny's going to stop by for me in a couple of minutes. Oh, all right, dear. Say, listen, I want you to be very careful of that corner at the foot of Maple Avenue. There was another accident there last night. Oh? Look, it's right here on the front page of the paper. You know, I think it's terrible they don't have a traffic light there. Oh, yeah. Let's see, Tom. Oh, yeah. Look at those fenders. Yeah, they were fenders. Well, it's lucky nobody was hurt. I want you boys to be very careful when you're crossing the street down there, too. Oh, we always are, Mom. I almost had an accident at that corner last night. Some woman came zooming right out in front of me. Are you sure it was a woman? Oh, yeah. She came barreling right across in front of me. I just she owned the road or something. Who was it, Bob? The mayor's wife? <laughs> I, I don't know. All I know is if I hadn't jammed on my brakes in a hurry, we'd had a nice smash-up. Is it true that women make the worst drivers, Pop? Oh, no, no. I wouldn't say that, David. I mean, women are much better drivers than small children. <laughs> now, just a minute. I resemble that remark. I'm a woman, you know, and I feel a little hurt. What about me? I'm a small child. <laughs> After all, the issue isn't to determine who's a better driver. It's see if you can't do something about that dangerous intersection so we don't keep having those accidents there. Well, it's no wonder they have accidents. It's almost impossible to see the other cars until you're practically at the corner. It's not always the driver's fault. I guess that's what our teacher means. What's that? Well, she says most accidents are caused by the nut at the steering wheel. <laughs> Sounds like your teacher's been reading some old joke books. Mm, he's a dan dan dandy. Ah. <laughs> we're having a woman's club meeting today. I think I'll try and do something about it. Maybe have a traffic signal put in there. How can you do that, Mom? Well, I don't know, David, but maybe somebody will have some ideas. Oh, the thing to do is get to somebody with some authority, somebody with some influence. You mean like Miss Wingate, my homeroom teacher. Does she have influence? I'll say. When she says stay after school, you stay. <laughs> well, with all respect to Mrs. Wingate, that's not the kind of influence I mean. I mean somebody with some political influence. You need somebody like that on your side. A guy like Miss Wingate on my side. She makes out the report cards, too. Well, you'd better hurry up with your breakfast. You're going to find yourself off her list. Yeah. Besides, you don't want to keep old George waiting. I wonder what he would have done in a case like this. You mean about the traffic light? Yes, sir. Well, I'm sure he'd have done something about it, David. He was a great man. And no problem was so small that he could afford to overlook it. Well, it seems to me that none of us can afford to overlook a thing like this. I don't think George Washington would have worried about a traffic light. Oh, what makes you so sure? They didn't have automobiles in those days. I'll think up an answer to that and let you know when I come home tonight. Hi, Mom. Oh, hi, Mom. Hey, Mom, Pop's on. Well, it's quite a greeting. What's all the excitement about? We're having dinner early. We're playing a basketball game tonight. Oh, good for you. Hello, dear. Oh, hi. I'm glad you're home. The boys want to have dinner early. Yeah, I know. They told me. Well, that suits me fine. I had kind of a busy day. 
Oh, so did I. We had quite a session at the women's club. Oh, really? Did you speak to him about the traffic signal idea? Yes, sir, I did, and it was received very enthusiastically. Oh, swell. Was any definite action taken? Mm-hmm. I've been appointed a committee of one to write a letter to the president of the Chamber of Commerce. Well, okay, let's get out the old pencil and paper. Oh, well, thank you, dear, but I've already written it. Oh, good for you. I wrote it during the treasurer's report and mailed it right after the meeting. I figured the sooner the better. In fact, I sent a special delivery. Oh, well, that's fine. Now, if you don't mind my making a suggestion, I'd follow it right up. In what way? Well, I'd go down and see the main guy personally. Oh, I wouldn't want to do that. Well, why not? That's the only way you're going to get any real action. Find out who the main guy is and go down there and contact him personally. And that's what I'm going to do tonight. So what's this? I'm going right up to Officer Clancy and get some real action. What are you going to do, step on his toes? <laughs> Who's this you're going to see tonight? Officer Clancy. He's a policeman. Oh. Well, how come you know him so well? He referees all the basketball games at the Y. Oh. He sounds like a real nice guy. Oh, he is. I need to tell him about that traffic light we were talking about. What good will that do? What do you mean? Well, he's a nice man, but what can he do? Are you kidding? Are you kidding? Am I kidding? Are you kidding? Am I kidding? <laughs> I must admit that installing a traffic light is probably a little out of Officer Clancy's jurisdiction, but it certainly won't do any harm for Ricky to talk to him about it. Do you think he has any influence, Pop? Well, you never can tell. He knows a lot of people, boy. We're sure he does, dear. He told me he's seen him come and he's seen him go. I guess he has at that. In fact, he said he sent some of them himself. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt that either. You know, I think it's wonderful the way you've all gotten together on this thing. And that's the way to accomplish something. Everybody work together. You know, I may be too optimistic, but I think that letter of mine might do the trick. Well, you know, I've just been thinking it might not be a bad idea if I took a little trip down the city hall and had a talk with somebody in charge down there. Don't worry, Pop. Officer Clancy can take care of everything. Oh, Ricky, stop talking like a moron. Moron, he says. Big man, terrific IQ. <laughs> That's what I like to see. Everybody working together. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Now, may I help you, sir? Uh, yes. Uh, this is the office of the Commissioner of Public Safety, isn't it? Yes, it is. Well, I'd like to see the Commissioner, please. Well, I'm sorry, but he's in conference right now. Do you have an appointment? Oh, uh, no, I don't. Uh, is that a, uh, necessary? Oh, I'm afraid it is. The Commissioner only sees people by appointment. Oh, yes. Well, I I'd like to make an appointment then at his earliest convenience. Oh, well, certainly. Just let me take a look here and see what day he has open. I realize he's a very busy man, but a lot of people are quite concerned. Yes, of course. How about a week from Monday? Oh, uh, you couldn't make it a little earlier than that? Well, he might be able to squeeze you in next Thursday while he's getting his hair cut. <laughs> really, this is a matter of some urgency, and I was hoping I could see him a little sooner than that. Well, I'm sorry. That's the earliest appointment I can arrange. His calendar's all filled until then. Perhaps I could help you. Would you like to tell me what you'd like to see the commissioner about, and then I could relay the message to him? Uh, well, I, I, I suppose... Although, as I say, this is a, a matter of considerable urgency. You sure I couldn't just squeeze in to see him for just five minutes? That's mm -hmm. all of his time I need. No, I'm awfully sorry, but like I say, he's in a very important conference. Yes. <laughs> Pardon me just a moment. Hello? Who? John, how wonderful to hear from you. <laughs> Oh, really, John? What? Oh. Bob, for goodness sake! <laughs> How is he? Fine. Oh, no, that's good. Say, could I call you back in a couple of minutes? I'm sort of busy right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Bye. 
Sorry to keep you waiting, sir. Now, what was your problem? Uh, oh, uh, well, are you familiar with the intersection at Highland and Maple? Oh, yes, I know the corner you mean. Uh, well, there have been quite a few traffic accidents there recently. Uh, nothing serious, but uh, minor things such as fender abrasions and, and things of that sort. And I thought if I spoke to the commissioner, he might be able to arrange to have a traffic signal put there before something serious really occurs. A traffic light at the uh, Maple and Highland. Maple and Highland. Yes. Well, I'll certainly see that this is brought to the commissioner's attention. I'm sure you'll get some quick action. Oh, well, fine. Of course, I don't expect it'll be installed tonight or tomorrow morning. <laughs> oh, it's not impossible. The commissioner is a pretty fast worker. Yeah, oh. On matters of this sort. <laughs> Uh, then you'll definitely bring it to his attention, won't you? Oh, yes, yes, I will. Fine. Oh, uh, thanks a lot. You're welcome. Hello? Who? George, how wonderful to hear from you. <laughs> secretary and she told me that the commissioner was in a conference between you and me I could have sworn I heard somebody say I'll raise you five from the back room <laughs> <laughs> well just the same you sure got some quick results I didn't get any results at all the girl said she'd speak to him about it but you know that's the usual routine what do you mean oh, I mean I just wasted my time well it may interest you to know that I passed there not more than ten minutes ago and saw a workman directing traffic lights you're kidding. Well, no, I was honest. Didn't you see it on the way home? No, I took the bus. Well, come on, we'll drive over. You can see for yourself. Well, how about that? I really got some quick action, didn't I? Well, you sure did. You know, Sonny, it just goes to show you, for years people have been saying, let's have a traffic light installed at that dangerous intersection. But it took me to go down there and get some real action. Ah, uh, just a minute, Oz. I'm beginning to hate myself now for even telling you about it. Well, nevertheless, when people say, who did that magnificent public-spirited job, you tell them it was your neighbor and friend, Ozzie Nelson. Sure, <laughs> sure, Oz. And when the light has traffic tied up for blocks, we'll erect a little sign. You are late for work this morning through the courtesy of Ozzie Nelson. <laughs> hey, David, I told you, boy. You told me what? Remember, I told you. You told me what? About the traffic light. What about the traffic light? He said it wouldn't do any good to ask Mr. Clancy. Ask him what? About putting in a traffic light. What about it? I mean, they're putting it up right now. You mean down in Highland and Maple? Sure. How many times do I have to tell you, David? Boy, it sure didn't take them very long, did it? Heck no. I don't mess around, boy. <laughs> you know, look at my traffic light. Your traffic light? Oh, sure. I'm the guy who got it put there. Oh, good for you. Congratulations, little man. Why don't you have the neighborhood take up a collection for me? <laughs> Get ready for dinner, boys. Hey, Mom, did you hear what I did? No, I didn't. Well, why didn't you hear about it? Well, why don't you wash your hands and tell us at dinner, and then your father can hear about it, too. Okay. Come on, David. Okay, I'll be right with you. Hey, Mom, I want to tell you something, but don't tell Ricky now. Oh, what's the big secret? Well, Ricky saw some guys putting in a traffic light at the corner of Highland and Maple. Are they putting it in already? Yes, ma'am. And he thinks it's because he told Mr. Clancy about the dangerous corner. Oh, I see. Yeah, but I know what really happened. Yes, I know you do. I didn't have the heart to tell Ricky. Well, that's very thoughtful of you, dear. I'm glad you didn't. The important thing is that the light got put in. Yeah, that's what I figured. That's the reason I let him go right on thinking he was responsible. I didn't realize how much could be accomplished just by writing a letter. Gee, how did you know, Mom? How'd I know what? And we wrote a letter to the mayor. Our whole class signed it. Well, when did this happen? And yesterday. I told our teacher about the dangerous corner, and she said we ought to try to do something about it. So you sent a letter to the mayor? Yes, ma'am. But don't say anything to Ricky now, Mom. Oh, of course not. <laughs> Let him go right on thinking he was responsible. All right, dear, if you say so. Oh, Harriet. Hello, dear. Say, I have some news for you. Uh, don't tell me. Let me guess. Oh, I can tell from that glint in your eye that you've already heard about it. Oh, uh, you mean about the traffic light? Uh-huh. <laughs> it was really fast action, wasn't it? Yeah, it sure was. 
Just goes to show you what can be done with a little determination and, and public spirit. Well, thank you, dear. Oh. <laughs> You're welcome. I don't know why I'm taking the bows. You're the one who's responsible for the whole thing. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> I really didn't do so much. Well, if it weren't for you, it never would have gotten done. No, oh, that's very nice of you to say so. Well, it's the truth. After all, you're the one who gave me the idea to write the letter. And uh, what's this again? I say, you're the one who gave me the idea to write the letter to the Chamber of Commerce. Oh, and you mean that's how come the traffic light got installed? Of course. <laughs> oh, uh, <laughs> this is marvelous. Oh, it's really not marvelous. Any one of the girls could have done the same thing. Uh, uh Harriet... It's lucky you happen to have a very good sense of humor, because I have news for you, dear. Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you, dear, but whatever you do, don't say anything about the traffic light to David or Ricky. Oh, why not? Well, David did a very generous thing. It seems that last night at the basketball game, Ricky spoke to Officer Clancy about putting the traffic light in. Oh, so he thinks he was responsible for it. Yes, but that's not all. David spoke to his school teacher about it, and the whole class sent a letter to the mayor. So David thinks that he's responsible for it. You well, say that's very nice of David, very thoughtful. I thought so, too. So naturally, I didn't have the heart to remind David about my letter to the Chamber of Commerce. Oh. Oh, well, gee, that was very thoughtful of you, too, dear, to let David think that he did. <laughs> I figured I can certainly be as generous as my own son. Oh. I'm sorry, I interrupted you before. You said you had some news for me. Oh, well, it, it, it wasn't important. Well, don't forget now, don't mention this to David or Ricky, huh? No, oh, I, 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 I promise. As long as each of them thinks he's responsible for it, there's no sense in spoiling their fun. Oh, oh, sure, that's right. Uh, do you happen to know where Sydney is? Sydney? Yeah, you know, the Thornberry's dog. Oh, well, I think he's out back in his doghouse. Why? Well, I'm sure he had nothing to do with the traffic light, so there's a little something I'd like to tell him. <laughs> Boy, it sounds confusing to me. Yeah, so naturally, I didn't have the heart to tell him who was really responsible. Well, I'm glad you didn't, Oz. I'm perfectly content to remain unheralded. My reward is just knowing that my action was another step in public safety. Now, just a second, Thorny. You know darn well who was responsible for getting the light installed. Certainly, Oz, and I accept your thanks. Believe me. Now, now, now wait a minute. Don't tell me you're going to start taking credit for it. Well, I say give credit where credit is due. I hate to disappoint you, old man, but Catherine has reminded me of something very interesting. Such as what? Well, it seems a couple of weeks ago I talked to a cousin. And I happened to mention at that time that we needed a traffic signal at Highland and Maple. Well, so what? Well, Catherine's cousin makes traffic signals. That's his business. So obviously my talk with him was responsible for the whole thing. <laughs> well, I thought Catherine's cousin had an electrical appliance shop. Well, yes. Yes, he does. Well, and he also makes traffic signals? Oh, well, now look, Oz, I didn't mean to give the impression that he makes the whole signal. Now, please don't misunderstand me. He makes the light bulbs that they put into the signal. <laughs> You know darn well he had nothing to do with it. I was the one who went down to see the commissioner. You mean you spoke to his secretary? Yes, and she promised to speak to him, and she obviously did because the light was installed. And if you don't mind, I'll take the bows for it. Oh, no, 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 Oz. I beg to differ with you. Catherine's cousin knows quite a few influential people. Oh, sure. Like the guy who paints the traffic lights and the guy who sells the paint to the guy who paints them? No. <laughs> A sore loser. There's anything I can't stand is the guy who takes credit for something he had nothing to do with. Pardon me. Uh, do either of you gentlemen own a car with license number 7N32048? Well, yes, I do, officer. Is something wrong? Well, I tried to flag you down there, but I guess you didn't see me, and I took out after you and lost you in the traffic. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Did I do something wrong? You drove through a red light. A uh, red light? Well, I, I didn't even see it. Yeah, back there at Highland and Maple. <laughs> And, and maple. Yeah, we just put it in. We've needed a signal at that intersection for a long time. May I see your driver's license, please? Oh, yes, yes, uh, of course. Gee, that's a fine place to put a traffic light. I mean, I'm used to driving right through there. Yes, I know. We've nailed quite a few people today. 
seems to me a person should get some sort of a, a warning. Uh, for, uh, Thorny, I ought to make you pay this fine. You're the one who's responsible for getting that light put up there. Who, me? <laughs> oh, I had nothing to do with it. You were the one who talked to the commissioner of safety. I only spoke to his secretary. I think it's a very nice traffic light myself. It's high time we had one, too. Oh, Oz, I think we can blame this whole thing on Ricky. Look, don't try to weasel out of it, Thorny. If you hadn't spoken to your cousin uh, with all his influence... And I'm all... not trying to weasel out of anything. And he's not my cousin, he's Catherine's. And I'm sure he doesn't know anything about it. Please try and be a little more careful next time, Mr. Nelson. Well, aren't you going to give me a ticket? Oh, now, that's a great question to ask. <laughs> no, I'll let you off with a warning this time. Oh, gee, uh, thanks a lot, officer. I, I really had no intention of, of driving through. It was completely accidental. Oh, I understand. Don't you think it's a good place to have one, though? I mean, that's a very dangerous corner. You're absolutely right. <laughs> thanks again, officer. Well, that's okay. Uh, and give my regards to Ricky. Ricky? Yeah. Tell him Officer Clancy said hello. <laughs> Good day, uh, Officer Clancy. <laughs> hi, Rick. Oh, hi, Dad. How'd the basketball game go last night? Oh, swell. You knew Officer Clancy? Officer Clancy? Oh, 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 why? Why do you say that? Well, he told me to say hello to you. He sure is a nice man. Uh, wait a minute, Rick. What else did he say? Nothing. He just said, give my regards to your dad. Oh. Yes, he sure is a nice man. Very considerate. Very nice man. <laughs> 